Hey guys, Miss Vinion here with Lift Video 2 for the Cold War. Alright, so we're going to be covering Learning Target 7.3 today and also talking about 7.5. We're going to do 7.4 in class. Make sure when, we're, when you're uh, done with this video, you go ahead and fill out the information on your Learning Target sheet after you've taken your notes. Awesome! Okay, so today we're going to talk about containment. Uh, containment was a World War II, uh, after World War II, containment is a Cold War policy um, to contain communism during the Cold War. Um, and this was issued through what we know as the Truman Doctrine. Harry Truman was the president and he issued a doctrine declaring that um, the U.S. is not going to support free nations that are threatened by communism. And this is going what's going to lead to the Korean and Vietnam Wars. Alright, the idea of containment and the Truman Doctrine stated. Make sure you know that one. Alright, the Berlin Airlift. Um, this is in Berlin when the city was divided up. Um, sorry, the Berlin Airlift lift the Soviet Union blockaded Berlin after allied zones merged in Germany. Um, so they wouldn't let anybody out of East Berlin where the zone where the, they took over in Berlin as seen in the last video. And this airlift um, supplied for 11 months until Stalin finally lifted the blockade. So people in Berlin um, didn't have um, food, they didn't have care, a lot of it because he had blocked them. So um, the airlift is where they, they come down and they drop supplies to them. As you can see, they drop them through the, from the air from parachute. And this is people waiting for supplies. All right, so the Cold War heats up. All right, so as the Cold War intensified, American foreign policy focused on rebuilding and unifying Western Europe. Americans at home began to suspect communist infiltration of their own society and government. Okay, so keep that in mind because we're about to get to that part. Um, another thing that occurred during this time, um, and that's kind of part of the uh, policy of containment, the Marshall Plan, which helped economic recovery of European nations. The U.S. gave $13 billion in loans to Western Europe. They gave money to them, guys, to help them build democratic nations so that the communist nations would not take them over or so that if they were so poor, they wouldn't turn to the communist nations. And there's John Marshall who came up with this plan. Also, the same guy who before World War II uh, decided, hey, guys, we probably need to start saving money so that we can go into war. Pretty cool guy. All right, and this is the Marshall Plan. It shows you basically how many millions of dollars we spent on other countries during that time trying to build up their democratic societies. And this is where all our money went. I want you to look at the places where um, the money goes, and you can see where they spent most of their money. All right, NATO is formed at this time, which is called the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Democratic nations from Europe and North America are part of this. And basically, they form, this is formed to defend Europe from any kind of Soviet attack. It just means collective security. It's like an alliance. Like, they didn't learn their lesson from World War I and World War II, so here we are again forming more alliances. Um, the Soviets counteracted that with the Warsaw Pact, um, and these are all communist nations that come together. Does this sound familiar? All right. Then we have CETO, which is the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization. The purpose of this organization was to prevent communism from gaining ground in the region of South Asia. Um, this was not very successful. Only two countries um, joined this. Most of them wanted to stay neutral. They weren't so concerned about communism. This is what the world looks like. Uh, let's think back to World War I, and let's think back to World War II, and let's see what does, what does that bring. Looks the same to me. Okay? Except, obviously, that we're against the Soviets. What I want to point out is that the country is divided. All right, so that brings us to the Red Scare. This is the fear that communists would take over the United States and eventually the world. And so it caused a scare in the United States. Um, and so that's a vocab word, so make sure that you get that one. Okay, what are causes of this Red Scare? The, the, they call this the New Red Scare because back in the 20s, after World War I, when the Soviets turned um, communist, there was the first Red Scare. We already covered that. Um, first thing is the Alder Hiss trial of 1948. Alger Hiss was a government official, and he has helped establish the UN. He was accused of being a spy, but he actually wasn't. But back in that day, if you were accused of being a spy, there was not a lot you could do. Um, they finally say documents revealed that Hiss lied under oath about communism. Um, second, the Rosenberg. Soviet Union creates an atomic weapon. Um, so Americans thought Soviets couldn't have produced the atomic bomb without help. So they chose these two, Ethel and Julius Rosenberg. Um, not chose, but the clues led to these two, saying that these two were spies that had given up um, secrets about the atomic bomb. They had very little evidence, but since the Red Scare was going on, they were executed in 1953. And lastly, the hydrogen bomb. Um, so 
Formerly, we had used the atomic bomb, so now hydrogen bomb. The Soviets test the bigger bomb, they call it the H-bomb. Now Americans are very afraid of nuclear war. And the Soviets have the biggest bomb. What are the effects of the Red Scare? The schools set, um, sorry, schools set aside areas as bomb shelters. Um, there's duck and drill covers, duck and cover drills, sorry. Bomb drills where kids hid under their desk covering uh, their head with their hands. Fallout shelters built in uh, backyards. Um, and like just in the middle of school, you'd have to have, just like we have tornado drills, they would have bomb drills. But they would get under the table um, in case of a blast, which we know probably would not save them. All right, some other effects. Loyalty review program. All federal employees had were screened by the United States, which is not something that was done before. And then, it's lunchtime. Okay, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, 1947. He demanded public hearings to find communist spies. Um, and so, basically, they're just on a, it's kind of like the Salem witch trials. You can compare it to that. They're just on a witch hunt for communists. All right, so the Red Scare spreads. Uh, Joseph R. McCarthy begins to hunt suspected communists in the U.S., and this is called McCarthyism. It's the search for communists in the U.S., um, and it damaged reputations with charges, but they didn't have any evidence. So let's look at this political cartoon over here. Move my face. Um, and it shows you the Committee on Un-American Activities. This is our secret word for today. If you come in and you know the definition and you say the secret word, uh, when I ask for the secret word and you know the definition, you're going to get uh, a C note pass. So, all right, I'll see you guys in class.